Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here again. Welcome. Welcome to another David R. Becker paint along. <laughs> and so this week we're doing a fluffy kitty and something a little bit different. We're always trying to do something different. Thanks for all of you that had brought or actually sent me a lot of the different images and stuff. And I'm always looking for the, I may not use them a lot of times um, because of maybe they don't have a, a um, royalty freeness to them uh, but we're gonna try to get something close to them and I'm, I look at everybody's and um, there's a lot being sent so um, be patient and oh look I got my hold on one second there we go turn my sound off <laughs> so you don't hear me twice okay so we're gonna go to the kitty this week or to the kitten we're gonna do and I actually did it already this um, afternoon and I think I really screwed it up so we're gonna do a much better one and here you go right away and show you this is what we did it's okay, but I'm going to show you a couple of things about it that I'm going to change and stuff. So, uh, first off, let's see. Um, oh, so, this week I, I forgot to get a beer. And so, um, I went around the house and I could only find this. So, um, Vista Bay Hard Seltzer. Sorry, guys. I totally forgot about it. It was a busy day today. I had a bunch of stuff to do. And so, this is a coconut mango seltzer. So, we're going to go with that. So, Let's cheer each other on with this. And that's the only thing I had in the house. And actually, it wasn't even mine with my sons. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, let's see how this is. It's not a beer, but again, <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Refreshing. Not bad, but not a beer. So, um, a hard seltzer. I would give that an, about a nine. It's a good hard seltzer. Actually, good flavor. So, cheers, everybody. And let's see who's here today. Let's see. Hello, Lynn. Sue. Everett, Pamela, we got Marianne, Monica, Cindy, eh, who else we got down here? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> can't get my glasses. So everybody else who's here, thanks a lot for stopping by, guys. And um, thanks also for those of you who um, stuck around and actually took my workshop online, my very first one, and it was really actually a really good thing. I'm probably going to do some more of those because it was really a lot of fun. But now we got to get into our kitten. So let's go to our um, first off to show you um, my website for those all those new people here come here. So this is my new, this is my website. So if you want to um, ever find out anything we're doing, here's the kitten where you're gonna pick up on my website. Again, anything that I do is on my website. So if you ever don't know what's going on and if I have a class or not um, during the week, um, come to my website. It's all on there. And of course, my supplies here. We have the supplies that I'm using, and these are the colors I'm using. And, um, but we're going to probably just use a few of those colors today because we're doing this a little bit differently than this afternoon. There's my brushes. All right, and so let's go start with the value study. Let me just show you a few things about this cat that I had done that I didn't do right. And so if you look at this, um, this cat, it's very soft edged. Everything about the kitten is about being soft edges. And we learned um, before that to get a soft edge, we do go wet and wet, right? So pretty much this whole cat should almost be done in the first wash, like when I do the things on the pixie glass where I um, soak the paper. And so most of this should be done all at once and something I didn't do in the classroom this afternoon because I have to stage it in certain stages, like the first wash, second wash. But really, um, now I think about it and looking at it, and oh, of course they're always um, the guinea pigs for my class uh, in the evening here. but. Um, we did a great, we did an okay job, and a lot of, actually a lot of people did it much better than I did. And so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to take and do this whole wash right here. This is basically the kitten is all soft edged, and to get that look, you have to work wet into wet. And we have to get all this done in one wash. Now the, um, the whiskers and the eyebrow um, hairs and the ear hairs, all that that's white, you could put that in with a really fine, fine masking fluid pen you know, with the um, ruling pen, but I'm just going to use white paint or you can actually scrape those out too. So we're going to, we're going to work on hard and getting all this fur to look like fur. And I've seen a couple artists out there on Facebook who do these cats like, and they'll do it in one wash and they'll have the whole body. Well, that's pretty much what we're going to try to get is get all this soft edging in here, almost like this little kitten is a cloud. And so we're going to try to get him all at once. And let me just show you the tabletop to see show you what I did and what I'm going to try to do better. And so here's what we had. This is what I had gotten this afternoon. And if you look, what I had done, I did the wash across the back and I stopped. And then I did um, a light wash in the cat, stopped. 
And um, so this time we're not stopping. And I probably should have done that. But in my classroom, a lot of times I don't like to just keep on doing the whole painting. And But that's what it should have been done here. Is where I go through and wet the whole paper and get the cat or the kitten done all at once. And then worry about the eyes, nose, and mouth to make it look like the cat that it is. Because that's what's going to give you the center of interest is the, is the face. And so the rest can just be blurred. It can just be a big, big fuzzball. <laughs> Basically is what you want to do. And then just have a little bit of the cat. I mean, this is still soft edge, but it's not It's not fresh. It's, I went into it, you know, and I went into it, I went into it. And here I wet it and I went into it. But you have these hard edges, which really don't need to be there. And especially if you want that cuteness. And I kind of um, took this on, this um, the kitten because of, I saw a bunch of things on Facebook this week of kittens done. And one of um, the best people I've seen doing is lovely kittens is um, Frankie Johnson from the Main Street um, Gallery or School in Lake Zurich. She does these, they're pastel, but she starts them out with watercolor on sandpaper and then does pastel over them. But her, her values and her softness of the, of the kitten is so neat. So, we're gonna work on making sure we get a lot of soft edges in there. And so that's wet in the wet. So let's get going here. And if you have questions, just let me know by putting them on the side there. And so who else have we got? We've got Maria, Tina, Barbie, it's a Sabum, is that it? Tabasum? It's so small, I can't read it. Uh, Mora. And so thanks guys. And actually um, I know that Tabasum um, had sent me some also something a bunch of you guys sent me um, images and stuff that we can paint and do remember that they have to be um, royalty free for one and then um, I may not use them exactly like that but I'll find something like it and that is royalty free and that so we can use it and so that you're not gonna get in trouble we don't want to copy work that's um, photographs that's or that not royalty free anyway let's go with wetting the whole surface now and also the colors what are the colors this is a very bland color if you look it's like basically one color or two color a very limited palette this um kitten you can do it that way or you can have a bunch of colors in there so um we'll see let's see what we're gonna go with i'm not sure yet and i'm kind of in because here i did um i went with a lot of pink and yellows and then there's a lot of reds in there so you may want to go with just maybe a limited palette and just try it. And I, I just want to, most importantly, I want to soft edges. So let's get fresh, soft edges on this thing. Not on this thing, on this little kitten. <laughs> and again, ask questions um, by typing them into the chat. And I will look up every once in a while to see. So welcome, everybody. Thanks and cheers. Let's try this non-beer again. <laughs> it's very good, but it's just not beer. And so I usually rate the beers. And this is a nine in the seltzer water. <laughs> And I totally forgot about it today. There's a, at, in my, at the place where I teach in Libertyville, there is a, a craft beer place that I can usually get some all the different kind of beers from around the world, but just totally forgot about it today. And so here we're wetting the whole thing this time, and I'm going to do as much as I can soft edged. Because, and then maybe this part down here I'll save for later, you know, because um, it's going to get dry by the time I get down here. So I can wet it, but I'm going to have to wet it again. So we can, we can call this wetting as you go along. So I'm just wetting it all evenly, this clean water. And now I'm going to go to the background and um, do I want to make it background? Let's try some, let's try some grays. What the heck? We don't have to make every painting super um, bright and super like that. But if you want, you use whatever color. It is very light. Excuse me. It's very light. This car, the seltzer water, I guess it's carbonation in it. So probably one of the reasons I don't drink carrot seltzer stuff. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to put a little bit of, um, hmm, should I go with the warms like this? It's kind of like neat sepia looking things. Let's see. Let's go in here with a little sepia or lavender. Of course, you know me and lavender. Now, I know this is um, white right here. The ear, the parts that are white are right here, side of the nose, and maybe a little bit of around here. So I'm going to try to keep the paper for that. But I'm not going to make it hard edge like it is in the, uh, well, it isn't hard edge in the picture either. So it's all soft edge. So that's what you do, wet in the wet. I just put a little bit more color in there. I'm making it a little bit kind of like a, um, a lizard type of color back here. Just something I just put in. I don't really think about the color so much as I think about the values at first. 
especially when I screw up the first time. <laughs> and so I'm just going to really think about the values and try to get the, the soft edges because this is going to be a hard one for you guys, I think. It's, it was hard for me too because you really have to watch and you have to learn how to work into a wet wash, wet into wet, because to get the soft edges, you have to make this cat look soft, um, this kitten, I mean. It's, and to do that, you have to work wet into wet. And wet into wet is the hardest way to work and to get, get edges. Can we make the kitten's eyes green, very green, emerald green? Sure, sure, that'd be fine. Even though I don't like green, but that you know, I'm getting I'm getting used to green. You know, it's it's it's, it's you know, I'm getting used to it. Let's see, we're gonna put that in there. So mixing a little gray in here too. I don't want it too dark because I want to keep it light. I want to keep it light and airy. And so over here, it's really light, light. And, you know, do I want to keep it light like that? Make it this dark and make that light and then make the cat? Um, I think this is kind of weird that it goes dark here. It doesn't go dark here. Maybe it's juxtaposition. So maybe I'll put a little bit right here. To, um, and the cat's going to be darker than this, so I can go right into the cat. And then there's going to be a little shadow here. So maybe I will keep this a little bit. And maybe I can spatter. What the heck? Spatter a little bit up there. Get a little bit of texture in there. If you were in my class last week when I had my uh, online workshop, we did a lot of um, learning how to do nice big washes of with with salt or you could do it with whatever, whatever you can possibly think of to make the wash look beautiful. We're all about washes and how we can make them look beautiful. There's so many different ways. As long as we know what kind of value it is, then just have fun with the washes. You can spatter them. You can spit on them if you want. You can do whatever you want to make that wash look good. That's what we want to do. We want to make the washes look wet into wet and like a watercolor and you can put different colors in there float them and so it's got a little dark here so i'll put a little of that so this is all wet now right and so i'm gonna keep it wet and i have my little spray bottle so i will keep the center wet too because i want to go right into the cat right away with my darks so this is this is all gonna be done while it's wet because otherwise i can't get the soft edges so again this will probably be a hard one but don't be discouraged by that but just you know re realize that this is going to be you have to do wet in the wet and try to keep things soft. That's the, that's the best thing about this picture is how soft everything is and how cute it is with the fluffiness. You know, it's just a fluffy cat. So we want to have that kind of look. Really fluffy. And if you want to put a little bit of pink in there, pastel, that's fine. If you want to make it blue, everything blue, that's, you know, look for the values. Look for the values. Look to the values to get what makes it look like the cat. You know, because it's... The fur, and actually this fluffiness of the cat itself is going to be kind of fun because you can do whatever, and as long as you have the eyes, nose, and mouth drawn really well, that'll look like a cat. It'll look like a cat. I guarantee it. So now we got to go with a lot of pigment, and um, I'm going to have to use some pigment that is um, thick in pigment, but I've got to use it light enough so that it's not super, super dark. So here, I'm going to start with the ear here and just kind of go in here and get some of these darks right away. You know, because I have to get this all soft edge. And so the the thing is, is that you got to get this stuff while it's wet. And so you're basically doing the darks and the lights all at once and just trying to get in there. Now, you don't have to get the hard edge darks yet because you can get that later. But this is going to be a good um, exercise in working wet into wet and trying to get the get the softness of all the edges. It's a hard thing to do, but it's a great practice for everybody, myself included, because I didn't do it this afternoon, as you can tell. There was a lot of, you know, there's a few hard edges in here, and it was it's not fluffy enough. And actually, those colors, too, I don't know what I was thinking. The colors in the background, it's kind of monochromatic, this, um, this picture, so use some of the colors in the background to do the cat. You, know, don't, you don't have to use all the separate colors. And so right down to the side of the nose here, it's nice and dark, light. And on the edge right here, it's nice and light. So I'm going to keep that light. In the background here, I'm going to put some of this in there. And I can do a little bit of hard edges later. Slightly hard edges to show some of the hairs and stuff in there. Or do them now if you can. If you can do anything you want in the beginning, that's the best. So that's light. And then it goes right to the eye here. And that's a little bit darker. So now I'm starting to notice that I'm just using this one color. And we have some pink. But again, you know, worry about the values. Because it's hard enough to get this all 
Dark green eyes on that cat would be fabulously beautiful, gorgeous. Okay, I will do that. <laughs> How do you keep the color from running? Well, just not using enough water and using more pigment. Always use more pigment when you want. Uh, good question, Everett. It's, um, it's all about how much pigment you have on there to control the pigment. You have to control it so that it doesn't bleed all over. If there's water in my brush, water on the paper, and water everywhere, it's just going to bleed all over. I am still spraying it in the middle here. I, I try to make it so it's not a puddle. I just want to make it all evenly wet. You can use a, you can use a brush that's clean, and you can um, wipe it so that it is evenly distributed. Now I'm going to take it over here, too. That's starting to get dry over here, so I'm going to keep it wet. Keep it wet where you're working. Otherwise, if it starts drying, it's too late, and you have to wait till it totally dries and go back in. So you have to, uh, this is going to be a good exercise for you to keep it wet and just try to keep on getting the edges and work all the edges. I used to do an um, exercise where we do a whole landscape where there could not be any hard edges in it. And it's tough, but it's a very good exercise to try to learn how to create and create soft edges and use enough paint. If you don't have enough paint, fresh paint on your palette, you're never going to be able to do this. You definitely have to have fresh paint because it's got to be um, thick and it stops the water from running all over the place. So Holbein doesn't dry out and is always fresh. So that's one reason. Another reason I use Holbein is because it never dries to a hard clump and it always rejuvenates instantly to give you a real nice, a real nice amount of pigment in your brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange in here and pink again, make it a little bit darker. And I'm going in here. See, it's all soft edged because it's wet. Now try to get the value right away too. That's uh, that's gonna be the tough thing. It's trying to get the value, the right value, right from the get go, and um, that means you have to make it twenty percent darker than you want it to look. I mean, it's got to be twenty percent darker. So if it's the exact value that you're putting it down, it's gonna be wrong. If it's wet and it's not it's the right color, it's wrong because it will dry twenty percent lighter. So you have to get in there and make it darker than you really want it. You have to make it darker. Otherwise, it's going to dry 20% lighter, and it's not going to be the right value. It's the hardest thing I always say in every, all my videos and all my classes. Is that that's the hardest thing to teach somebody because how, how do you make somebody do something that looks wrong? You know, How do you go in here and make this thing look too, way too dark, knowing that it will be lighter, but when you're looking at it and you're going, yeah, that looks perfect, it's just going to dry it. And so you have to really force yourself to make it look wrong and make it look darker than you want it. That is the hardest thing for me to under, or, or even do. It's just hard to do. So now I'm going in here. This is definitely not dark enough. Though I can keep it, I can keep it all, as long as I, you know, it may not be dark like the picture, but at least if I keep it all related to the same throughout the picture, so that's my dark, then that's okay too. You know, then you can just say, well, that's the dark as I wanted it to be. <laughs> So you're kind of fooling yourself and thinking that it is that's the way you wanted it but and so i'm going underneath here see i'm just getting all soft edges and i'm just rubbing i'm rubbing the paint in it's almost like you're definitely rubbing it you know i don't have to i'm getting a soft edge and it's not bleeding all over the place because i'm using a lot of paint and there's a lot of water on my paper and so then i'm getting soft edges and this is a good exercise for you guys you may not be able to do it the first time because you're going to have it too wet. It's going to bleed all over the place. But just keep on trying and try to get it to work for you and so that it, it just bleeds a certain distance. And you'll know then right away if you're using enough paint because it's all about how much paint you use. You have to use enough paint and enough water. Keep it evenly um, saturated You know, and have a mister. Don't have one of those spray bottles that sprays a really heavy-duty amount of water around there. It's got to be more of a mist, you know, so. I think I'm back, guys. <laughs> oh, man, what a... I can't believe it. it just shut off, completely shut off. Am I back? You seeing this? <laughs> of course, now everything is dry. So, um, oh boy, what the heck was that all about? So, am I back? Am I back? Am I back? Anybody tell me? Okay, good. I'm back. Wow, I don't know what happened there. It just shut off. My whole screen just went down. 
technical difficulties, I guess. Sorry, you guys. Um, of course, now my paper is dry, so it's like great. <laughs> Just what I need to do. So, um, oh boy, what do we do now? So we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to rewet this, and um, I got some really nice things in there, as you can see. <laughs> But um, let me just um, let me rewet it. I guess. Sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. My my broadcasting program just went down. So here we go. We're gonna have to. This is damp, and so what I'm gonna have to do is rewet it all again in areas that I want. So we've got some really beautiful washes in here. If you take a look, they turned out really nice, and so it was really coming along well until all of a sudden my my thing. So I get this out of the way, and um, hopefully this will stay this time. Man. It's just basically my whole screen of my app just went away. And I was like, okay, that's not good. All right, here we go. So we're going to re-wet this area that I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to try to make it even. And if I use just regular um, water, no pigment in it, and if I can go over this, I can maybe salvage the um, making it all nice and evenly damp. Because again, I was going really well with the soft edges. So again, now I won't be able to go over those areas because those are dry now. And um, within the five minutes that it has this happened, so I have to do. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and just rewet everything that I need to still have a good soft edge, and even this area here. Now it's gonna make a little bit of a mark here where it, in the background, that's okay. I think if I just um, keep it nice and evenly wet, and if I don't have any um, pigment in my brush, it kind of shows you that you can still <laughs> get the wetness in the wetness in there and I'm just gonna stay away from that part because if I go in there I'm gonna create watermarks because that's damp still even though I went away it's still damp I'll have to look into the why I'm not sure why it just it just went away it froze I'm like oh, holy smokes okay so what we're gonna do now and that was me so it's not your computer that froze it was my my program my broadcasting program just went away it was just so weird and so my cameras of course went down and so um we're back and even though my paint on my palette is even dry yet all right so we're gonna keep on going here now with the with the darks in here and so see i, I rewet it again evenly so now i can keep on going with the amount of paint it's all about the amount of paint that you put in here and again to make it soft edged and so i have to make sure when you get on a roll too, it's like you can't stop like this because then you're going to start dipping into different colors. And now up here, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm going to spray that a little bit. Let's see if I can't get that back, that nice um, softness of everything. Because again, I have to do it wet in the wet. Of course, if one time it freezes, it's like when I have to keep everything wet. <laughs> so here we go. We're just going to keep on going with the softness now. Part of this white in the chin of the cat is not white. So I'm not going to leave it white of the paper because I want the white of the paper only to be a couple of places on this side of the cat's face and the nose. And so, so those technical difficulties will not um, make it worse. So we're going to go in there and make sure that we keep it nice and soft edged. Look how light it got though. You know, it got pretty light, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's good to see. You know, that um, you really have to use enough paint to make sure it gets 20% darker. Make it 20% darker so when it dries, it's 20% lighter. Now I'm going to go to here. I'm going to take a, a small amount of paint. And actually, having my cloth here, uh, or my table, having the towel on my table is great when it comes to having... Uh oh better not go away again. Don't go away, please. <laughs> oh, man. What the heck is going on today? All right, so we're going to take this a little bit. And make this a little bit darker over here. And then, like I said, I'm going to pick this little light inside that is the light of the cat. It's a light part. It's white on the cat, but it's in shadow. So we're going to switch over to a lighter color. And maybe even put a little yellow in there from what I have the background. Maybe pink. And make it really light to wash. And take my brush, get the water out of it. Because there's water down here already. And so I just want to put a little bit of color right here. Very little bit, just to get it dark enough so that it looks like it's in shadow, but still white. And then that will make the other colors, the, the white of the paper, really stand out by making this a little bit darker right here. It's in shadow. And how am I making it look so um, soft edge? It's wet in the wet. Remember, wet in the wet is um, makes makes soft edges. 
and it's all a good practice for you to start learning how to do that and getting yourself enough pigment on your brush to make it so that it looks soft edged because you're using a lot of water and the paint. Now that had to wet there too because next to excuse me next to his nose. I better have a drink here, guy. Cheers! <laughs> what a day. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna go over here. This is still wet, and so I'm gonna get this right away too. Just gonna kind of go in here. Her brush strokes appear to be going in the direction of the fur. Correct? Yes, that's a good point. Thank you so much, Pamela. I actually go with the um, the way the the fur is on the cat. Definitely, that's a very good point. I always go with the direction because it's sort of like if it's going out this way. That way it looks like fur and it's going and it's coming out of the kitty right there and um here where it's dark and it has a little bit of light there um that is negative painting the light fur you know i'm painting into that so that looks like and again you always go into the direction of the fur is going so very good very very good point thank you for pointing that out actually <laughs> some other things i'm thinking about right now i'm uh, just hoping this keeps on going <laughs> And I'm using a little bit of violets, I'm using reds, and I'm using you know, the yellows in there. And so, uh, use, I'm doing them very lightly though. I'm not making them really hard um, contrasty. I'm trying to keep it soft. I'm trying to keep it more um, to the same kind of feel of the colors. You know, it's, it's not a really bright, bright purple. It's not a really bright, bright red. It's very, everything's low key because I'm trying to keep things soft and, and pretty and fluffy. And again, I'm worried more and more about the values and then the soft edges. I'm also worried about the soft edges. I want them to be nice and smooth and, and fur-like. And again, to make the fur look like fur, it has to be soft edged. And you can make um, little tufts of uh, hair, like you can see some are a little bit darker down here. So just pick up a little bit darker and actually make the brush stroke look like fur, like, like, like we just said. We'll go back and forth like fur. And so we'll go down here. All right, and look at how nice and soft it is this time. It's gonna be nice and soft. I, I can already see that. So that's good. Even with a delay. <laughs> I just cannot believe it. it just went away. Like, it's always something, boy. And so now on the outer edge here, this is all wet. Remember I just wet it when I came back and it was damp, but um, since I wet it all evenly, you can go in there and, so, and the pigment controls how far it goes, you know, because the water is on there all evenly. So you got to decide how much pigment to use. <coughs> oh my God, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me there, guys. <laughs> all right, so at least I didn't blow the <laughs> circuit. <laughs> and so we're going to go in here and, um, okay, your brush strokes appear to, okay, same, same question. <laughs> and so we're going in here now. All right, so I get a little more pink in here. And then we'll go right up to the paws, and then it's dark around the paws. My paper must have a little bit of a, I must have scratched it there because it's going into that spot right there, a little bit darker, which is okay because it's darker right there anyways. But it's kind of weird sometimes if you scratch your paper while it's wet. I think when I was doing the, that area, I must have, when, I, when it went down, I went and scraped there or something. So here I'm going a little bit darker. Again, working wet, very wet in the wet. There's no dry parts in here right now. Just this whole area. This is all drying, so there I cannot do anything. Gets damp, and so and the thing is, I'm not doing that area, so it's okay. Here I put a little bit of this into it, so it looks a little bit at light. And then over here, I always told my class today too. If there's something you don't know what it is in there, blur it out. Blur it. Make it really blurry. And how do you make it really blurry? Very soft edges. Just make it soft edge right here and just blur it out to nothing. That way you don't have to explain it. It's just blurred. And um, in any painting that you do is that you want to do that. You just want to blur it out. If it feels like you don't know it's there and it is the background, this is just a big fluff ball right there. So just blur it out and let it just let it bleed a little bit. And actually there's a couple I saw on, uh, or there's a couple paintings I saw on Facebook where it's almost like a Japanese brush stroke and stuff where it's just one brush stroke, that whole thing is done, and you just get this beautiful soft edge going out, and that's enough to show that it's the side of the cat, right? You don't have to show what part of the cat it is. You know it's the side and the back, and just let it bleed out there. And try to do this all in one wash, really, try, and try not to go back into this, 
because if we have to go back into it, we're in big trouble. And the funny thing is, is even with this um, with this delay that we had, we're probably still gonna <laughs> finish it early because this is a very simple painting when it comes to just putting down the big wash and you're done with that wash. I mean, you cannot go back into it to make it look hard edge. You don't want it hard edge. You want to make everything in the very first wash. Because anytime you start putting the hard edges in there, that's going to um, deviate from these beautiful soft edges that you're making, that I'm making right now, at wet in the wet. So here's the paws. I'm just going to put the little paws in there. And I'll divide them up with the, with the other little darker parts later. Um, but for now, again, it's all soft edged. And not to scare you again, but um, definitely try to keep it soft edged. I mean, if you want to learn how to work wet into wet, this is the perfect um, solution for you, is do a cat like this where it is all soft edged. I know as many of you may, uh, it'll dry on you and start getting hard edges. Just stop and re-wet it. I really want you to learn how to do wet into wet. Don't have any of the part of this cat hard edged. Uh, that's the goal, is try to not make it hard edged. The only hard edges you want will be when this is dry, I will go into to get the eyes, nose, and mouth. And that's the only thing you want to hard edge. I want you to have everything else just like you have here. Because it'll look so much fresher. And it looks, and it'll identify itself as a cat. Because you have a drawing like that. And the eyes, eyes, nose, and mouth will explain it for you. And so let me just use my hair dryer for a second. Because I have to dry this part right there. And I'm going to go right into the hard, or the dark hard edges. And at the same time while I'm drying it. I'm going to turn you guys off because i got to blow my nose. <laughs> that sneeze I had. <laughs> so let me just turn you off, guys, for a second. Let me just turn the sound off. And where the heck is that now? <laughs> one of those things, one of those days. That's a different place now. Where the heck is my... Okay, you can hear me again. <laughs> so here we go. So now we have all of the soft edges, and I didn't get quite as dark as I would have liked and gotten. And you can see what I remember I talked about something happened here. I think I did something while it was, um, I leaned on it with something um, when it was wet while I was trying to fix the uh, monitor. And I think I put something over it, and so that's going to be like there because it was a scratch in the paper. So watch out for that. So when you're doing it, don't have your um, app. Lord. <laughs> so, and thanks, Barb, for the blessing <laughs> when I sneezed. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Now we're going to take our small brush. I don't need another drink here. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Now this is like a number 10. <laughs> so we're going to go in here. Now, when we do the, um, the features, I can be hard-edged, and when you do the eye, and let me just show you one thing about eyes, and I did this as a class too. So when you're doing the eyes of a dog, cat, person, doesn't matter. On the cat, I'm going to first draw the outer edge. I'm going to draw the outline, which is black. You'll see it's very black in there. And so I'm just going to, it's almost like a football shape. You know, you have a football shape here. And then you do the color. And then I do the color after I get this dark in there. This is kind of like an eye of a, per, a human also. And so I, I'll get the color that I want the color to be. And you said kind of greenish color you guys want. So we'll make it kind of greenish or golden greenish. And so I'm going to wet it and I'm just going to make the whole thing. I'm going to leave a little white for the highlight. And I'll wet the whole, I'll wet the color, use the color. And then we're going to do the, we're going to do the pupil. And I, now I know in the cat in the picture, it's more like a, um, like a, the shape like this, it's like this for the pupil. But the cat's eyes get rounder the more comfortable they are. And if there's sunlight, yes, they get kind of like like a um, football shape. 
But make them round because they look better that way. They look more, um, they look cuter when they're round instead of like a cat eye, cat eyes. Um, it's up to you. You can, I, I mean, it's, it's still going to look cute. I tend to like to have a, um, the round eye because I think uh, my cat, when you pet it and stuff, if the eyes get really round, you know, the, the pupil. And so dark, so. And then um, what I do then is I take the color of the eye, then I make it darker right on the top and on the side where the highlight is. And then leave the part that's away from, if the light's coming this direction, it's hitting there, the highlight. And then this part of the eye, the color part, this color part will be the light part. So um, the dark pupil, and again, I'll make that black. And I'm just going to use black around it. And then the color, I should make the color a little bit different so they can really see this. Um, that this part right there is where it's going to be lightest of the color of the eye. And then I did use this black there, but so let's say, let me just put another color in just to show you for sure that you can see this. So let's say it was orange. <laughs> so we just put the orange there and then make the brightest orange would be right here. And so that's where the light would be. Let me just take some white and show you. So this right here would be the lightest part away, opposite where the light hits there, the highlight. That would be the lightest part of the eye. And so I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, the color part of the eye, not as dark as I just made it. So don't make it that, that, that dark here. I'll lighten it up a little bit. You can see the color is darker here and that's part of the light part. So that's how you do the eye and everything else around it will be dark on this cat eye. It's just black. So let's just do that. And some people like to put the color in first, so you can do that too, but I like to keep it. Well, let's do that. Let me just put the color in first of the eye. So I'm just going to go right here, put the color in, make it pretty light at first. And so I'm going to make it greenish. This is the color of the eye. And same thing on both eyes, try to make them both about the same looking in, in a way of the color and the, the way the lighting is hitting and where the highlight is. And you can also put masking fluid there or put white paint in for the highlight too, if you don't want to feel like, so that's like, now he's bug eyes, <laughs> alien. <laughs> And now we're going to go with solid black. I'm just going to use black maybe with a little bit of purple. I just want it really dark. I want the outlines to be very dark. You could put a little color into it afterwards, but I'm just going to go in there with the black. And then just outline the outer edge. And you have this drawn, so you can just kind of copy what you have drawn. And that goes down here. And actually this cat um, will have the dark going right into his nose, but um, we'll maybe make it not quite as dark as that. And so here we're going in and see, I'm just outlining the eye. Any questions? Let me see. You can make the dark splotch into cat's ID tag. Oh, good idea. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Pamela. The colors I used were a lot of, um, a lot of alizarins and, um, purples and the, to make the brownish kind of color. I went in with like a violet, a violet and orange makes it makes it so I had a lot of that color in there but for this black now that was just answer your question whoever answered asked that right now I don't have my glasses on me right now boy it's just been one of those days so we go down here and we're just going to kind of go through here on the bottom and then I'm going to go right into that I'm going to wait for this to dry up there because I don't want to put the pupil in and have it soft edge I want the pupil to be nice and you know crisp so I'll go into the nose a little bit and I'm not going to make the nose as dark as in the photo because a lot of them have, have made a little pink in their nose. So that's a, that's okay thing to do too. Put a little pinkish red in the nose. You can still make it darker, but you know, it's not important that it has to be super, super dark, you know, the nose. And so, and since my whole painting is a little bit lighter than what I had expected because of, you know, I had to shut, shut down quickly. <laughs> and so some of this has got a little bit lighter than I would have liked to take it. And I'm still going to go in there and I'm going to show you how to soften those edges. But right now we're just kind of getting the detail, the detail darks in there. I'm going to put a little bit of this. And this is like a, make it like a mart martini glass, I always tell people. Like the cat and is like a martini, his nose is like a martini glass. And here's the stem. And then you got the little part that holds it to the table. So there you have your martini glass, right? And um, you can... Do this little because it's fur, so it's gonna be broken up a little bit. So I kind of break it up a little bit with my finger, and so you don't see it. There's a little bit of shadow underneath there, and a little bit of because they their lip may be a little bit pink, so you can use pink to make it a little bit darker right here. And just and look up close on the photo, and you can see that there's a little bit of pink right there for the lip. Let's put a little reddish pink. 
right there. And I'll make them look cute. And this definitely is a cute, a cutesy picture. So go down this way. Yes, we could make that a tag because it's going to be something there, but sometimes when it dries, it will get about the same, but and it definitely, I'm probably going to put hairs over that and just put the whiskers over it and we'll, we'll leave it at that. And anytime you try to fix something some, sometimes, especially when you want to ever keep everything soft edged, um, it just ruins it because you get rid of the soft edges that you work so hard to get. Now, right here by the eye, uh, it was a little bit darker than I had wanted or didn't get. So I'm going to wet it now. I'm going to take my small brush, use my the small brush and just wet this area a little bit farther than where you're going to work into because I need to have a little bit farther so that it doesn't bleed to the edge. Otherwise, if it goes to the wet edge, it's going to be hard because that part is dry. So I'm going to wet it just a little bit beyond where I want to go with, with pigment. And I wanted to float the pigment in there again. And so now this little edge right here is going to be a little bit darker. And like I said, I used a little bit of this red, this like burnt sienna type of color, a little bit of violet, a little bit of pink. I put pink in it too. A lot of pink in this picture. So and pink being red and white. So um, if you don't have pink, just mix up your red with a little bit of white and you'll have pink. And so I can't, I got to stay away from this area. Actually, I got some really nice um, things happening there on their own. So I don't have to go back in that area. Just so happened that it got some nice... We got lucky on that. Happy accidents. Happy little painting of a happy little cat. <laughs> Definitely black boy. Black boy from here, yeah. Cat has eyeliner, so she's a thin. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one. We can make the dark salmon color here. Or make the splotch a small ball of yarn. Oh, that's all right, too. Have it just right there. So you guys can do it. So when you make a mistake like that, you, <laughs> you know. Let's see. Actually, I made this mouth too big there. It, smaller is better. You know, it looks a little bit more, you know, cute if you make it keep it small. So here and now I got this dark in here. And so maybe a little bit darker in this area here. Put a little bit of warmth in it. Put a little bit of warmth right there. Kind of goes up the side of the nose. So see how I'm sculpting it again? Because it's wet and I can sculpt in there. I can make things soft edged. So even afterwards, even if something is dry, you can re-wet the area. You can always go back in. Don't worry about feeling like, oh, it's ruined because I didn't get it the first time. You can go back in. You try to get everything in the first wash, but sometimes that's just impossible. And so you just re-wet the area and just kind of go back into that area. Now, when you're, make sure you always have some clean water so that when you're putting the water back on, that it's not dirty, you know, because if it's dirty, that little bit of water you put on is definitely going to show. It's it's still pigment. It's just a little bit, but it will show. So there I have a little bit of that. And so we're going to keep that at bay. And now I'm going to go up here in the ear. Actually, that's pretty dark. You know what? I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to make this darker there, and it'll just be the same color as the, the splotch. And so what I'm going to do is re-wet the splotch there, the, the whatever, ruin that. I'm going to re-wet it and make it darker so that you won't see it because it would be the same darkness. Because it should be dark there anyways a little bit. And then when I put the, um, the whiskers over it, then you won't see it. So hopefully that will work. Always an answer. You know, you can always make things happen. And it's just, it, nobody's ever going to know that it's going to be wrecked right there. So I'm going to soften it, soften the edge. And use enough paint to cover up that little blotch. And so what you can use is the same color. I'll use violet that I used there, but make it thick. And so basically, or use white and then make it thick color. And then just go over it. And it will cover it. But as long as it's wet, you can make a wet and a wet wash. And just use opaque colors because then it will cover it. There's another good reason to use opaque colors. And not that bright though. And you can use opaque colors like that um, where you um, make sure it's wet though and it's floating. The pigment has to float to make it look transparent. So see, I just put light color on there and it's going to look very transparent because I used white basically. And so I'm going to go down here, make his chin again. Let me spray this area a little bit here. Now I'm going to use my brush because that spray is going to make it too harsh. 
I'm going to wet this area right here a little bit because it comes up a little bit. So look at it. I'm being very careful with it. And so as long as it's again wet, I can go back in with a, with a value, with a soft edge, and I can again look at it and see if I can't get the soft edge to be exactly what I want the, the edge to look like. every sound that I hear on my computer is now just it's freaking me out hoping that it doesn't go back then I have no idea why that happened it's so weird all right so we're gonna put a little bit of detail in here how much time do we have okay let's still get it done in time I hope you won't mind staying just a little bit longer to get this done it was just a five minute delay so you can go into the kitchen and get yourself a little snack or something. So here we go. We're going to make this a little bit darker down here. I like this color of the eye, so I'm going to put a little bit of that into the bottom here. Look at my finger. Ah, my finger was dirty. I put it in that spot. So I'm not going to say what happens if I deal with that. Oh, I see. That's the same thing that happened there. So let me show you. I put white right there, right over it, and just wet it, and then just put a little white over it. And... Well, I must have put my elbow or something on the painting when I was trying to fix the <laughs> put a little white in the water there. Okay. All right. Now I think this is dry enough. I'm going to get the pupil now in there, and so nice and thick the amount of paint. And it's just gonna be black. You don't have to put anything in, in a pupil that's not black because it's basically black. And I, in the picture, the cat has color all the way around the eyeball. I like to make it so it's a little bit more like a human so that you, it's dark up there. You can make a nice round circle and make them look cute. But um, if you make him look like where there's um, color like that all the way around, he looks too surprised then. He's like, <gasps> and so by if you make it a little bit, a little bit less and darker on the top, then it'll look more it'll look more cute and a little bit more like not so scared excuse me surprised or scared i'm going to darken now the color on the top here and leave the bottom part of the eye be the um the light part see i'm doing the top part and then the, the bottom opposite where the highlight is that's where the light part of the eye is of the iris the iris part the colored part so let's see how um, it's very harsh right now, but when this dries, I'm going to take a little bit of um, my damp brush and I will soften some of the hard edges there. So it's not that quite that hard, but it does. Um, it's good to have one place that is a little bit more detailed and a little bit more harder edged, because this is the cat. This is a part of the cat that we want to see, his face. And so, I just went in there. Okay. And now I'm going to do a couple other places like that where I'm going to get a little bit harder edged so that there's not only just the eyes that have the hard edges, but there's other a few other places. And it could be like up here by the hair. I'm going to negative paint in the hair by the inside of the ear because the hair comes from here and just goes out. And I will use white paint for that, but I can also darken that area a little bit to make it look like it's going in there. So I see it, it kind of goes like this. And I, I'm not wetting it first because I want the hard edge and... It'll be low contrast, so that'll be enough to make it look soft edged because it's not super, super hard contrast. And it's okay to have a little bit of hard edges, you know, but just, and I can soften those areas too. I can just go in here and just soften a little bit. And I am going to use white paint for, instead of scraping out the hairs, I'm just going to put in white paint. And you'll find it's just as good. It's just as fine to put in the white. Now you're not going to get as white as the paper because the paper is the whitest and so that definitely is always the way to do it is getting the white of the paper to show you the um instead of using white and then there's this little line right here going up keep it low contrast and then you'll make it look soft edged low contrast makes makes it look basically so i could also do the background again and maybe i'll do that and if i do the background i can keep it that light but now make a hard edge against the um against the light do I want to do that or do I want to just keep it? Now this part got a little bit light here. And so that looks kind of weird. So let me just think. Let's just do the background real light. I'm just going to take some color of the background and, and 
go over here. I'm not going to wet the whole surface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area, try to get the same color I used and get this kind of look of the hairs, negative paint in the hairs, and then let this bleed out with just clean water, clear water, and it'll look, it'll still have the same look. It's going to be fresh looking by getting a hard edge, but it's such high, it's so high contrast. It's not, not that much contrast, so it's going to look very soft still. Now, normally you don't want to go back into an area because it'll look overworked, but this will be fine because I'm just using pure water and I'm putting a little bit right there and it's very low in contrast. The value is very close, but if you look close now, see how I just had a little bit of the hair sticking out of there? And this will dry even, so it won't even look like I did anything there. So the only thing I want to do now is right underneath the eye here again, maybe a little bit darker. And again, if I go low contrast, it'll still look soft. It won't look uh, hard edged because it, it's going to be so less a contrast that it will look soft edged. So I'll put that down there. Bring that down to the eye. A little bit of that. And this is almost, right now I'm doing very, it's just tinting the paper. I'm not even hardly putting any pigment in my brush. It's just very, very, like hardly any water. And I'm just kind of using this little bit of tint right here just to get a little bit of that tint in there. And it'll, like I said, it'll still look soft edged because it, 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 it's a hard edge, but it still will look soft edged because there's not much contrast in it. Now I'm gonna also do, I'm gonna soften the edge of the eyes because they're a little hard and they, it is soft. Again, everything's soft. So I can just rub it a little bit with a, with a damp brush and it will soften the edge of the black. And I'll give it a softer look. How do you get the whiskers and small hairs in? Well, I'll show you that in a second. Never. <laughs> yeah, that's the, I mean, it's actually an easy part to do. You just need to um, have a rigor brush. Um, some people like to scrape it in. You can scrape it in. Um, I don't like to damage the paper usually like that. So I just use a, a rigor brush, the rigor, the fine rigor, and then just um, use that to get my little hairs, little whiskers and everything. And so I'll do that right now. And so first thing I'm going to do, though, is get the little lines, the little dots where the hairs come out of. That's kind of important. If you look really close on this image, let me just push this up for you a second. If you look really close on this image, you see these little, you see these little, little dots right there. So those are the dots I'm going to try to get now and just put them in there a little bit. And so that's what I'm going for right now is just getting those little images. The little dots and I have them drawn with a pencil so I can just go over them and so I can see and now again this part is not as dark as the photo now I can maybe make it a little bit darker right here but that's okay and, and, and actually that's wet so you're not gonna get the dots right there but I'm just gonna put them right there and this side is a little bit lighter but I'm gonna make them a little bit darker that's a little bit too dark Where's my tissue paper? No, I don't have any tissue paper get a towel <laughs> Here we can make them a little bit lighter. You don't want them too dark. I mean, they're just, you can barely see them in the photo. But then when you're putting in the, the um, whiskers, make sure that everything is dry because you don't want to spend all this time and then go into the, do the whiskers and then it's wet and then they just blurt out and all that beautiful time you waited and all that beautiful stuff you did and then you just ruin it by doing one white thing. So I'm going to wait a second. And while I'm doing what I'm waiting, I'm going to make these highlights a little bit smaller. This is a little bit, a little bit large for the highlights. They should just be a small little little dots in the eye. They get a little bit big. So make them a little bit smaller, a little bit darker. And now, let me just put the hair dryer on it one second more. I know we're over time already, in five minutes, but we're gonna just hair dryer and we're gonna get the hair done and we'll be done.
Yep, you're right. This cat definitely could use a um, uh, makeup artist. <laughs> One thing I don't like right here is this line coming through there. So I'm, right away, I'm just going to go in here real quick and dull that down a little bit. Make it a little bit darker right there. And it's okay to have a few hard edges. That's fine. A few hard edges won't hurt anybody to have a little... It's better than having that line go down. And also right here, this goes up a little bit too high. And so I'm going to tone that down a little bit right here. Where the whiskers are going to go. Right, okay, we're going to do the hairs, okay? <laughs> All right, now, to make the um, whiskers, you're going to clean out your white and get some pure white. As you can see, I don't have pure white right here. This is all mucked up right here. So that's, I'm going to take, take a towel. I'm just going to go in there and get my white back. So now i got the little bit of top. It's always just the top layer has a little bit of paint on it. But with white, if I want to pure, just wipe it off like that. Now, I need enough paint. And I don't want to do it in my palette right here because that palette has a little bit. You got to make cer certain it's super white. I'm going to go over here where there's no paint. Try to make sure your water is nice and clean. And then test it first on something, you know, before you go. Like, um, go crazy with it. And I may mean, I'll just test it on this one because I already ruined this one anyways. I'm just going to kind of go. See, I just kind of taking one shot and making one slight move. And um, nice and white. So we'll go with this direction first. And when it goes over white, you'll see what I'll do sometimes is make it dark after that. So here I'm just going to go over one, two, and you can barely see it, can you? So I'm just going to kind of come on here. And I love these little um, eyelash type um, ones they have, or the ears right here. I'm just going to put into the ears. And it has to be wet enough, your brush, so that it'll, it'll slide. The white will slide on really easily. So is it just a, it's almost like you drag it across it real lightly. Is that dry? Okay, so we're going to go from, you always go direction where it's going, you know, just kind of start here and just, and have a plan. Look at where you're going with the, with the, and then you can also cap it a little bit to dull it down a little bit. It's going to go up. And they're, 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 um, their whiskers go in every direction sometimes, and it's really fun on the cats. And then you can also give them a little eyelashes, or her little eyelashes. A nice, like you said, makeup artist. And then it goes from here. It's like, um, if you look again real close, there's hair coming out of her ears. And then we're going with the uh, eyelash one. See, it's just going to kind of come out here. Oh, look at that one. Isn't that cute? <laughs> and here we're going to make, oh, look at that big one. Isn't that nice? Go up. Oh, that's a little bit much, isn't it? <laughs> Let's dab that with a little paper towel. <laughs> Going crazy now. That's okay. I like them. They look good. That one got a little bit thick too. And I don't go too crazy with it. Now I noticed that um, that one, the, the pupil turned a little bit, of, um, turned a little bit gray instead of black. You want the people to be solid black. This one too, it got a little bit gray because I, I put the, it was so wet when I put that in there. All right, so I think that is about it. If you want to put a little bit of the, um, the fur, like down in other places, like down here, maybe on the chin, if you want to do a little bit of, maybe in the mouth here, that's okay. You can go ahead and do that with white paint. It's not going to hurt it. It's just going to, Give you a little bit of um, little little extra little little hairs. I and mean, there's a lot of hairs in this cat. And so if you also want to do some darker hairs, like here, you can make it look like it's um, lighter hairs by making the, making the paint around them. So a little bit of dark hair here and there is not, it's sort of like a reflection or a shadow of the, of the hair or the whiskers and stuff. You can make it look like a shadow too. All right, and they can be dark and they can be shadowed and stuff. All right, I think and I said I was going to fix that. The last thing I'm going to fix, and I know we're about 10 minutes over, but we're going we're gonna to do it anyways. So we're going to just wet this area right here beyond where I want to have it go. I'm just going to darken that a little bit because that's just a little bit too bright for me over here. It looks kind of weird that this body just kind of is dark with light right in that one spot. I'm just going to go in here, darken it a little bit, and then we'll call it quits. That's better.
Actually, let's put some pink in there because it's kind of dark, but I still, still want to make it look pretty too. I'm going to put a little bit of pink in there, that area. And let's give it a little hump. Put that in there a little bit. That makes it look furry. And I think we are good. Unless you guys see something, let me know. <laughs> Base is better than your first one. Yep, definitely. <laughs> definitely better than the first one. And it's a little bit softer. It's nice and soft, you know, compared to the one I did in the beginning. The other one is just a little bit too much. Um, it's a little bit too hard. There's too many hard edges. It wasn't cute and, and soft edge like this one is. Especially where it got soft. Let me take the tape off and we'll be done for another <laughs> Thursday. Next week I will be doing it from Raleigh, North Carolina at Jerry's Hardorama. And so that Thursday it's going to be in a hotel room. So it's not going to be the black yet. I'm going to be doing the black paper. So get yourself some black paper probably a week or two after the, um, cause I'm going to be down there in North Carolina. If you're down in that area for Jerry's Hardorama, the arts of the Carolinas it's called. I'll be in the booth of the Legion Paper Company and doing demonstrations on black paper and on UFO. So if you're in that area, you can come stop by. It's a big expo in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so the day before that all happens, I will be in, I will be there and I'll be doing the um, thing from, from, um, from my hotel room. And so it's not going to be the black paper yet because I'm going to study what we want to do on the black paper. And then it'll probably be the week after or the week after that. So the next two weeks after the next, we're going to be doing the black paper. So be on the lookout for black paper. Get yourself a black paper, watercolor paper. It's called Stonehenge Aqua Black. And um, you can, it's the only black watercolor paper out there. And so you need that paper if you're going to do a watercolor on a watercolor paper. So they sell them pads. You, can, you don't have to buy a huge pad. You can buy 140. They have 300 pound, 140. And so buy yourself something that um, will be the black watercolor paper and we can, we can start that. I know a lot of you already bought it and stuff. And so I'm just looking for the perfect, um, perfect picture. And I'm also practicing it at, at the show there in um, North Raleigh, North Carolina for the Art in the Carolinas. And that'll be next, thir next Friday and Saturday is when the actual thing goes on. I will be there Thursday, but broadcasting and it also is not going to be at six o'clock it'll probably be a little bit earlier um, because of time change i think and so i'll look for the time in probably eastern standard time i think it is um, we're going to see what time and so just check my newsletter and I'll, uh, it's definitely not going to be at 6 30 at our time i don't think but i i don't know until next week okay so until next week guys thanks a lot let me, let me show you both of them how much better that one came out today so here's the one this, this afternoon and here. So a little bit softer, right? Not quite as dark in contrast, but softer. And I was, and that's what the whole thing was about. It was the softness and cuteness of the cat. And that's what I did miss here when it came to the softness of it. So try to make it soft if you can. If you can't, you're still going to have a cute cat, but it'll be just a little bit hard edged. All right. Sorry about the, um, sorry about the <laughs> um, freezing of the thing, but nothing I could do about it.